Sometimes it just takes bringing conscious awareness to expenses in order to realize how much money you're wasting. In this video, I'm going to talk about 14 thoughtless ways that you could be wasting money. And wasting money that you can't really think about, you can't see automatically, or you don't think twice about. I imagine a bowl full of water with a couple of little small holes and the water is just leaking out. In this case, it's money. You don't even notice it until one day you realize that the water level has gone down quite a bit. So if we can bring some attention to these things, we can squeeze out more savings every single day. Number one are the things that we buy with good intentions but we never follow through with the reason for buying them. Think about the fitness equipment you bought. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start lifting weights. I'm gonna start running on that treadmill. I'm gonna start using those balls and that, that exercise band. Yeah, but when the non-fun part, which is the fun part, is buying the stuff, the non-fun part is doing it, you find yourself not doing it. This can also be all the craft supplies. You walk into Hobby Lobby or any of the craft stores and you go, ah, oh, it's so awesome. I'm going to buy all these things and I'm going to do them. And then you end up with a cabinet full of stuff that you've done nothing with. Or maybe journals. Journals are so beautiful. The paper's so nice. You can find ones with thick paper with dots on them, you know, that gridded dot line or, or that college rule or just big blank open pieces of paper but you find that now you have a collection of beautiful journals you've done nothing with, or books. Oh my goodness, this person just recommended this book, I'm going to buy it. And then your bookshelf starts getting fuller and you've not read any of them. So the next time you run across something like this, sit down and really think about it. And know that you, before you buy it, you have to make a hard commitment to yourself that you're going to buy this thing and you're going to do it, or in the case of some of these, they can be replaced with less expensive items. And if you can prove to yourself that you can do them, for instance, buying a cheap dollar store notebook for the journaling or working out online or with free YouTube videos with no equipment or using getting books from the library, if you've then committed and shown results, then it's okay. You feel better about buying the thing because you know you're going to follow through with the intention. Number two is not catching your breath before making a purchase. And as things come easier and easier to buy online, now all you have to do is swipe on that app to purchase and it'll be here by 5 p.m. Catching your breath is a skill that is going away further and further. Whereas if you thought back in you know, 1985 that you wanted something, you thought about it for a while because it was a bit before you got to the store to go and get the thing, even if you found the thing when you got to the store. So we have to consciously make the effort to take a breath, to put in place maybe a 24 or a 48 hour rule. If we see some sort of marketing or advertisement or somebody in our office comes in and they've got this great jean jacket and we think, oh, I want one of those. Rather than going out and buying it right then with that impulse, taking a breath, thinking about it and realizing, you know what? That jean jacket's really not my style. You need to take some time. Number three is going out for drinks as entertainment. Drinks out are extremely expensive. Go doing it on a consistent basis as your way of socializing, as entertainment. No, number one, it's not good for your health. Number two, it's really, really bad for your pocket. So you might have to think about maybe the people that you socialize with. If, if the people that you socialize with are only the people that hang out to have drinks as entertainment, maybe you need to think about a different group of people if you're really trying to be more conscious about what you're spending. Because drinks out are expensive and it's a lot of wasted money that maybe you just don't think about because in place of not doing it, you think, well, you know, this is the one thing that I do often because it's how I socialize. Maybe there's a thing you need to think about socializing elsewhere. Number four is just wasted energy. Leaving things plugged up like your phone or your computer or your printer. Things like this, if they're plugged up all the time, they pull that energy all the time. They're always charging. And I also have heard and seen results of leaving things like phones and computers charged up all the time. If you ever take them off the charger, then the extended time of that battery, it doesn't stay charged nearly as long. It almost does something to the battery to keep it from staying charged if you keep it plugged up constantly. 
this could also be in the way of your electricity bills, like leaving your window coverings open during a hot day where all that sunlight's coming in and heating up a room, which is wonderful during the winter, but during the summertime, you're creating all this extra heat and you've got the air conditioning on at the same time, it's running up the bill, it's wasted energy. Number five is keeping your savings in a low yield savings account, one that doesn't pay you a huge dividend. We know now that high savings, high yield savings accounts are everywhere. If you haven't researched it re more recently or seen wherever your money is, t is sitting, gone to that bank or looked at other options to where you could put it to where it makes more interest. It works for itself more than just that low interest savings account or a savings account that actually doesn't bring in any interest whatsoever. So that's wasted money if you could then put it in an account, a high yield savings that could have more of a benefit to you. Number six is constantly buying or having around a lot of snack foods. Of course, snack foods are great every now and then, but when you snack a lot, it's a, oftentimes, now there are obviously healthy snacks, but there are a lot of empty calorie snacks, meaning they just don't fill you up, they cause you to be hungrier, or you're going to snack so much and spend so much money on snacks that you've also bought for money for your meals, for your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you don't end up eating them. You don't eat as much. You end up wasting a lot of money because you've, you're full because you've been eating all these snacks all day. So limiting the amount of snacks that you're having causes you to then eat better meals, meaning you've intentionally bought for your three meals a day and you're eating better and you're not wasting that on those snacks, buying more because you're buying all the meals and the snacks. So just be more conscious about all the snacks that you, you know, bring home when you go to the grocery store hungry. Number seven are car expenses. When you're looking to buy a new or a used car, not looking at the long-term expenses of it. Most people just look at what they want, what they want to drive, and the price of the sticker. Instead of looking at the actual cost of that vehicle over time, vehicles cost money to maintain, and some brands of vehicles cost more than others. You've got to consider the maintenance. How much is the maintenance on the thing? Can you do it yourself or is it one that has to go to a, a special dealership because they've made it so way that you can't even figure out how to get in to change the oil? The upkeep of them. The gas type. Perhaps it's a vehicle. I know when I got my last vehicle, I researched what gas type the vehicle took. One of the, it wasn't even a luxury, it was not a luxury brand, it was a basic brand of car. I saw that it took the highest of cost gas. And I thought, that doesn't make any sense for this type of vehicle. I thought that was really only reserved for you know other kinds of luxury vehicles. So taking that into account when you're looking at the vehicle, the gas mileage, how many miles to the gallon does it get? And the resale value, is this a car that contains or keeps as much of its value as it can? Meaning we know that cars are a depreciating value, but historically there are vehicles that run for longer and therefore they hold their value more. They hold more value than a vehicle that isn't one that people hold on to. Number eight is buying items at the grocery store that aren't food. That is not the place to buy them unless you're at some place like a Walmart. But buying things at the grocery store, maybe like laundry detergent, cleaning supplies, um, anything else, face makeup, face wash, that kind of thing, at the grocery store, you're going to pay a premium. The other day I was at the store and I saw these people walking out, huge container, and this was not the cheapest grocery store of Tide clothing, deter washing detergent. And I just had this, ugh, like somebody punched me in the gut feeling for them because I know Number one, they bought brand name of that and they can get the exact same thing in a off brand. But number two, they bought it at a premium grocery store. So they paid a premium price. Number nine is shopping without a list, whether it's a grocery store or going and you're at the mall or you're at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. Without going in with an intention, you're going to inadvertently forget things and have things on that, the, in that cart that didn't, you didn't need, you didn't want, and it's just gonna be a whole mess. Shopping list, anytime you go out, is always going to save you money. Not having one, it's going to waste. Number 10 is paying for subscriptions that you aren't using. Not keeping a list of what current subscriptions you have because we're in such a subscription-based society now. There's 10 different 
TV subscriptions and then you've got all the subscriptions for your workout app and your music app and all this stuff. I keep a list of exactly what those subscriptions are and what their cost is so that I know. And in my budget, I have a subscriptions budget, meaning this is what we, we have and this is what they come out of. We have, for instance, for our TV, we don't have cable TV or satellite. We have two TV subscriptions and that is it. But when you have these subscriptions and you forget about them, you forget to cancel the free trial and now you've got it and you got to figure out the password and you don't really even notice it because you don't check your bank account very often or very methodically, then that is a huge amount of wasted money. The same goes for the subscriptions and you don't even use them for the amount that you are paying. Meaning let's say you go and you get a TV subscription so you can watch this one show that the person at work says you've got to check out, but you don't have that app, but I guess I have to get that app in order to watch the show. You either, you get into the show, it's great. You know, you watch a couple of ep episodes and then you don't really pay attention anymore. Or you get through the entire season of the show and you go, oh, that was great. And then you never cancel the subscription and you never go back on it for anything else. Wasted money. Number 11 is buying brand name. I talked about it a bit earlier. I did a video on it where I bought the exact same item, meaning like spaghetti sauce and cream cheese in a name brand and a store brand. And I saved over 40%. Buying name brand is going to cost you a lot of money. If you haven't checked out name brand recently, maybe you should try it again because they've come a long way and name brands are oftentimes made at the same places, sometimes in the same jars with a different label as the name brand. The store brands are as the name brands are. Number 12 is letting your car insurance, home insurance, any other insurance you have auto renew without evaluating it. Is the coverage you have still the coverage you need? They continually go up every year. Now, I don't see a lot of people talking about the amount of money insurance, the inflation of insurance currently. It is going out of control. It is massive. You talk about you know inflation at the gas pump or at the grocery store. This is huge. In some cases, 25, 50%. I see this. So looking at that policy, looking at when it renews and going out to bid on it to see if there's somebody else out there that can give you a better rate. Otherwise, you're just paying increasingly and increasingly more every single year because you don't want the hassle of looking into it. Number 13 is not planning your meals. Now, perhaps, you know, you don't really go out much. You eat the same things. Um, you're at home most of the time. It's just you or maybe you and your spouse. Okay. But otherwise, if I ever talk about this family I saw once in Walmart and I pushed it around my car and had all this food in here, I had my list, and I saw the family in the middle of the, the, the store, because you know how many ever aisles, they were in like aisle five of 10. And they already had some things in there. And they go, oh, what do you want for dinner this week? I, I, I did a second double take, because I thought, oh, I guess some people just don't plan what they're going in there to buy or their meals. You are definitely, say going to say uh, waste money because first of all you're gonna buy things you don't need you're gonna have a lot of food waste because you bought something you didn't end up making you're going to end up missing some things that you need not having enough for all the meals of the week and therefore eating out which is 300 to 400 percent more than cooking something at home not planning your meals even if it's just for a few days at a time is inevitably going to waste money number 14 goes along with number 13 and it's buying lunch out. I see people who buy lunch out all the time, like every day. Number one, it's not good for you. Eating that, that food that we know at a restaurant is made in less healthy ways than you could make it at home. But as I said, 300 to 400% more. So not planning your meals, planning your meals so that you have leftovers so you can eat those during the week. It's a huge waste of money. You know, you're spending $15 just to go out and grab a sub, a drink, and a cookie, and a bag of chips when you could have made a sandwich for a couple bucks and brought it with you. Now, if something's happened and the weekend has kind of gone awry and you haven't planned ahead enough and you don't have the food for the week and you have to go out, well, you realize it and you you go in. And I, it's happened to me. I don't, didn't have anything for lunch. I didn't bring anything. I completely forgot. Life took hold. And it hurts when you go and you spend that much and you know you could have saved. So planning out, not buying lunch out, especially on a consistent basis, limiting it if you need to, is definitely gonna save you money because otherwise you're wasting a huge chunk of money. 
let me know what you think people waste money on. I mean, thoughtless things they don't think about or maybe they just don't want to think about. Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you have a fantastic week and I look forward to seeing you next weekend for a new video.